DFM, DFM rocks. Bula Minaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Yanda Vinaka, Fiji. In this bulletin, police investigate bodies found in Highlands Ministry concerned with social welfare scheme abuse. And five charged with illicit drug importation. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nandi. The Lengalenga community in Nandi is still in shock following the discovery of five bodies in the Nosori Highlands yesterday. Police have confirmed the bodies were of a 63 year old carpenter, Nirmal Kumar, his 54 year old wife, Usha Devi their 34-year-old daughter Nileshni Kajal and her two daughters aged 11 and 8. When FPC News visited the family house last night, a police officer was already patrolling the home. According to next-door neighbor Praveen Singh, the family was kind, generous and loved by all in the community. They had lived at Lenga Lenga for more than 60 years. Singh says the last time he spoke with 63-year-old Nirmal Kumar was just over the weekend when Kumar had asked him to help prepare for a prayer session. So I came here, I asked this guy, he said, hey, I said, do I still close? Maybe they're going to the shopping. So I uh, still waiting for afternoon, still uh, I'm waiting. So when I heard the news, I really said. The abuse of social welfare department benefit schemes by those who don't need help is a concern for the ministry. Department Director Rupeni Fatiaki says some persons accepting benefits have properties and businesses and submit false information to qualify. Sanya Namboila reports. The Social Welfare Department scheme review has revealed the misuse of the schemes to falsely gain benefits. In some cases, uh, the uh, recipient has passed through and uh, it's not reported back to us and somehow the family is still uh, using the fund. Patiaki says some gave the wrong information in order to get benefit and this affects some monthly payouts done by the ministry. And so we come across cases where, you know, uh, recipients have their own, have businesses. We have come across um, cases where also recipients have property on rent, which does not qualify them for this assistance, because it's for those that don't have the means of income. The Social Welfare Department currently has five major social protection schemes, which currently caters for more than 90,000 people around the country. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Five people charged with importation of illicit drugs were presented before the Suva Magistrates Court yesterday. Ali Hassan, Visek Roshal Sharma, Francis Sangeeta Devi, Zahran Ali and Nilesh Vikash Prasad have been charged with one count each of importation of illicit drugs. It's alleged that the five between 5th and the 21st of August in Suva without lawful authority imported 222.68 grams of illicit drugs, namely methamphetamine. The five have been released on bail and the case will be recalled on October 23rd for mention. Iliesa Dhaunilawa, charged with one count of aggravated robbery, assault with intent to rape, has been further remanded by the Suva High Court. Dhaunilawa told the court that he wants to withdraw legal aid as his counsel and get a private lawyer. He failed to assure the court he would have a lawyer ready for trial, which starts on September 9th. It's alleged that on February 27th this year at Vudi Road, no sorry, he robbed the complainant of items worth $4,228. It's also alleged that on the same day, he assaulted the victim with the intent to commit rape. The case will be recalled on September 4th for mention. The Fiji Correction Service continues to break barriers by giving inmates a second chance. Yesterday marked another milestone achievement as five sponsors have come on board to mentor five inmates under the Sow a Seed program. FCS Commissioner Francis Keane says giving inmates a second chance is vital and the Sower Seed project is one that gives lifetime opportunities to those who have been incarcerated. Young inmates under the program are selected by senior wardens at various corrections facilities. 
and this helps them secure employment. He is urging the inmates to make use of this opportunity. At the end of the day, the choice is yours. Eh? Uh, you want to continue to go down a path that brought you under our care, or you want to make the change? We're here to help you make the change in your life. Okay, you young kids, there's so much ahead of you. Good news for sugarcane growers as they will continue to benefit from the government's grants and subsidies on fertilizers and weedicides. Under the fertilizer subsidy program, growers will continue to receive a subsidy of $25.59 per 50 kg bag. 55% of the price of weedicides will be paid by the government following the allocation of $1 million in the new budget. Using the sugarcane development and farmers assistance program, Growers can access grant assistance for planting new cane and increasing production. $4 million was allocated to the program in the 2019-2020 national budget. The Fijian High Commission in New Zealand is exploring opportunities to increase agri-exports. High Commissioner Filimuni Wangambada says the New Zealand market is warming up to Fiji's agriculture sector. He is confident that local farmers will reap the benefits once all necessities have been taken care of. There's a huge demand in New Zealand which we have to meet eh? and we've been talking with our agriculture uh, uh, ministry on uh, meeting some of these demands for exports of produce. Developers of the WG Friendship Plaza and the management board of Holy Trinity Anglican Primary School are still undergoing a mediation process. Local government minister Pramila Kumar says even though the case is before the courts They've suggested the two parties come up with a solution. Kumara says the developers of the plaza have not met with the ministry since the order was issued in June. The only time they came to us was for the stop work order to be removed, which we did. And um, then uh, that's when we had a major discussion in terms of the problems we had identified, what they had to do. And we also gave them only a waiver for seven days. After seven days, the, the stop work order was reinstated. It is important to have regulations in place. Minister for Indu Industry and Trade, Premila Kumar, highlighted this while speaking during the uh, launch of the new logo and eGate website for the Fiji Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Kumar says regulations are needed to ensure everything happens uniformly. She says all businesses should be treated in the same way and there should be no exceptions. Uh, I know some businesses who will come forward and say, it was just a small mistake. I just made a mistake. I'm really sorry about that. But every mistake that a business community makes, there's a repercussion. Somebody is hurt. Not physically, but financially. So this is where the rules and regulations must be applied and it must be applied uniformly. Coming up, McKee ready to serve another term and Basketball Fiji getting corporate assistance. Stay with us. Bula. Radio Fiji One, Welcome back. Fiji Airways Flying Fijians coach John McKee is willing to continue as head coach after the Rugby World Cup. McKee has four months left on his contract with the Fiji Rugby Union. Speaking on FBC TV's For the Record program on Sunday, McKee said if given the opportunity, he'd be happy to renew his term. You know, my contract actually finishes at, at, at the end of the year. Uh, you know, like all things in the world of sport and coaching and rugby, I mean, you know, performance is important. Yeah. So, you know, the, I'm, I'm sure the, the, the CEO and the board will be looking at, at, at Rugby World Cup performance and, mm. and, and making their decisions about, about what happens going forward. Certainly, certainly for me, um, you know, 
post World Cup f for me, I'd be I'd be happy to continue here as yeah. um, as a flying Fijians coach. So. Some under-20 players who pre represented Fiji at the World Rugby Junior World Championship will feature for the Fiji Airways Ndrua this weekend against Brisbane City. Tevita Ikanavere, Ratu Osea, Wangani Vatu, Caleb Munz and Levi Natave are in line for their Ndrua debut. Coach Senirusi Serivakula says they have a new-look team and he's excited about the young players. The Ndrua will leave tomorrow to take on Brisbane City in Australia at 5 p.m. this Saturday. They went and uh, played the Junior World Cup, and then they, there's a lot of uh, development in there, and then they showcase their talent, and, uh, and they've shown that uh, they're capable to be included in the group and playing in this, uh, in this level. And that's why I've uh, picked them in this uh, first round, uh, the 24 member, uh, to go into the first game against the Brisbane City in Brisbane. Ratu Kandavulevu School under-18 fullback Semi Matalau has taken on the striker position for the Nasino football team. Matalau, who played in the final of the Deans against QVS, has also featured for the under-17 and under-20 national football sides. He says that playing football in a big league such as the VPL is an awesome experience as the level of competition is intense. He adds that playing with the Nasino side is challenging as they don't have a training ground to practice. Which anyway is, uh, it's different. You know, soccer, you, you run a lot. Eh? Right. To, compared to rugby, it's different. Right. You get to rest and run again. So it was not uh, hard for me. Because from soccer to rugby, it's, it's okay. Nasinu will take on Tavwa at 1 pm at the Uprising Sports Complex in Pacific Harbour on Saturday, while Lambasa will face Suva at 1 30 pm in Subrail Park in Lambasa. Basketball Fiji is grateful for the support and assistance they've received in the success of the three-on-three -three youth championship last week at Ed Courts in Rewanga Suva. One of the companies that assisted Basketball Fiji is the Damodar Group. Marketing team leader Manoa Puamau says basketball has grown and the Rewanga community has helped Basketball Fiji in developing the sport. Meanwhile, the Fiji under-18 side that will travel to Bali next month for the three-on-three -three mixed youth championship includes Kalesi Tawake, Estelle Kainimoli, Rusiate Katunimbao and Nikhil Chan. Um, so yes, we definitely be supporting basketball. We've noticed, the model group of companies have noticed that uh, basketball has definitely improved. Um, uh, we saw that uh, during the South Pacific Games. Uh, congratulations again to the, to the women's uh, basketball team and the men's uh, basketball team uh, for your, for your uh, medals in Samoa. Cloudy periods are forecast for Suva, Savu Savu and Lambasa. Expect mostly fine weather in Nandi, Lotoka and Ba. A strong wind warning remains in force for all Fiji waters. Further outlook is for southeast winds, 20 to 25 knots, rough seas, moderate southerly swells. And that is your FPC Morning News. Remember to join us at 1pm and 7pm for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. That's it from me for now. Have a good morning. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because, because it's hot. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Our home is from Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. Ama nam sagar reddiye, amlog school me, amlog gar me, aur kai bhi reta amlog kali Mirchi FM sunta. Gold on tawa me Mirchi FM, dago mama. Mirchi FM, it's hot.